Now, this particular picture, I have referred to it already last Sunday uh, because I, I believe there's a, a strong uh, parallel uh, to that uh, focus that we spent in the life and ministry of Nehemiah. Uh, and this is a couple of months back now. We spent quite a bit of time moving through, uh, yeah, that, that personal journey of leadership and the shared journey of the community of faith as they set about a particular project of rebuilding the walls of the old city of Jerusalem. And it was uh, an amazing, um, I'm, I'm not expecting you to pick up all the details, but this is the sketch as I would present it as briefly as I can this morning. So we have, have a man who is, uh, feels the burden to be a part of this project and God makes the way for it to happen. He researches what the exact situation is and he can see uh, the condition of the wall where some is still in place and it's still quite healthy. Some has been dismantled by direct attack and there's plainly some areas that haven't been given the attention that they needed simply to maintain them and there's a few places requiring a total upgrade. The population is given, uh, as it were, a, a picture of the project and there's a high percentage of people that, that sign in. The leaders in the community, locals all pick up on it and people uh, take on board personal responsibility for many of them for their own space. And so it becomes, in the Old Testament, very much a personal journey as well as a shared journey in this venture of rebuilding. And one of the key verses that is often quoted uh, sort of in the context of a whole variety of situations, but one of the things that it was critical to Nehemiah's ministry and the effectiveness of his leadership and the whole project happening is how Zechariah, who was a prophet in that season, spoke very clearly and he said, then he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. It was clearly uh, a God work that was happening with this high level of participation by the people who were drawn into, who could see their space in the picture, and it was a great venture. So that's Nehemiah. Some of that you may recall. It uh, sort of fits in space. But then... I would venture to suggest that the context in which we find ourselves as a local Christian community and the wider Christian community in Australia, that there is this great venture of rebuild. There is this, uh, uh, these features that were, were similar, were, were very much the context of Nehemiah, where a nation had in some respects lost its sense of definition and identity. And there was, once you could see the picture, you could realise that there was a need for rebuild and new build. Critical features of security, vulnerability, and a sense of moving forward as being a people of God needed to be addressed and need to be addressed today. I'm sure most of us are aware of the changing perception of the church in the wider community. Is that a fair thing to say? The wider community is looking at the church differently today to what they were when you grew up and when I grew up. Things have happened, things have changed. People now look at the church and there's a there's a, a screen that they look through. They look sometimes at buildings. They look sometimes at the history of the church. They, they think, when they think church, they think institution or they think religious practice. The media has a profile of the church that people, that's where they're getting their pictures from. That's where they're getting their impressions from. They're understanding that the church is, is internally conflicted. And it has a diminishing um, influence and uh, reducing uh, relevance. Would that be a fair picture, would you say? Don't get too excited about it, because I've got a very, very different picture of the church. 
It's a great community. See, it's really, really important for people in this age when we hear that picture that's being portrayed in front of us, do we take that picture as it's presented or do we take the picture that Jesus drew? Which one do we go by? Yeah, the one that Jesus drew, isn't it? And yet so much of our responsiveness, and I say myself as well, is, is actually based on what's being presented by the world around me. And so part of, part of my venture this morning, particularly in looking at the great community, is to sort of say, yeah, okay, there's this picture coming at us, there's people portraying who I am, excuse me, who's going to portray who I am? Shouldn't it be me? If people perceive me, and I take it personally, to be a particular type of person, that doesn't make me that person. Hopefully you can catch on to a couple of interesting things that I'm picking up in that picture that's coming at me in regards to the relevance of the church and all that sort of stuff. Two very interesting features that are emerging, and this is just looking at... Uh, the analysis of our uh, natural church life uh, stuff, and, and, uh, but also the, the media saying two things that are now emerging in our nation. A strong interest in spirituality and a strong interest in belonging to community. Ta-da! So where do I start? Hiding behind a box because of all these people's perception on me or going on what Jesus has clearly said, that he will build his church. And that's a pretty powerful statement, isn't it? I mean, I mean it looks like a rock to me, but the imagery of the rock is not going to change. How Jesus presents his picture of his followers gathered, of his church, is not going to change. And you look at that concise little comment the declaration that Jesus makes to Peter when Peter makes that rather sort of incomplete recognition of who Jesus is. Jesus looks at him and says, I'm going to build my church on what you just noticed. That's awesome. And the amazing thing is that history suggests that it, what Jesus described would happen, did happen. His gathered ones, his people owning his name, whatever name that was, they were called all variety of things before we came to call them Christians as such. But he said, I will, I will advance my purpose. These people identifying with me, I will advance and advance and advance and advance and nothing is going to stop what I'm advancing. And that's exactly what happened. You and I are privy to the record. We can open up the book of Acts and we can see what Jesus was doing or what he said he would do. It was happening. The church was, as we use the term, was advancing and advancing and advancing, spreading, growing and discovering what it means to be the church in a whole variety of situations, a whole variety of geographical uh, situations, a whole variety of cultural settings, a whole variety of personal gatherings that had all sorts of things happening inside of them. But his church kept advancing, spreading, expanding and growing. Did you hear anything about that this morning? Uh, would you like to rerun the statistics for us, Sue? How many, how many children? How many children came to faith in the space of months? A couple of hundred? Millions. And they declared their heart inclination. I'm going to share this with my mum and dad, my siblings and my community. Did... Oh, okay, right. <laughs> I was sort of... Uh, you know, uh, but that's the picture, isn't it? 
So we don't lose sight of the fact that when we're working with perhaps the Nehemiah picture, the Lord's still advancing his church, progressing in a whole variety of ways. There's a lot of places where the church is healthy, 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 and, and the aspects of uh, the concept of rebuild is not there. It's, it's build further. Take the gospel further. And so, thanks, Clive. I was wondering how I was going to advance from my picture of the rock. <laughs> but it's good. All right. Now, having put all of those um, um, sort of that, that, that sketch out there for you, I, I want to... I want to go to Hebrews 6. Thanks, Gerald. <clears throat> Ready? Uh, Commonwealth Games. I was speaking to some time. Some, who, who was I talking to yesterday? Yesterday. Oh, it was our son, uh, Naaman. Yes, FaceTime with our youngest lad. And he's saying, I didn't realise the Commonwealth Games was on. Oh, what did he say? They came and went and I didn't get a chance to look at them. Oh, they came and went and I didn't get a chance to look at them. That's something like what I said, didn't it? Do <laughs> so you see how vital it is for husband and wife to complement each other, complete each other? And you will notice sometimes there are gaps in what I'm saying, but hopefully you can accurately fill in the gaps. But my point is, and did you notice... Actually, it's a real family thing this morning. A young, young Michael was in the paper the other week. What did you like about the Commonwealth Games, Michael? The swimming. So did I. Especially this bit. Don't you like the diving? Especially, especially the 1.5 metre springboard. Because it's not far from you to the water. But I was watching that stuff when they did the 10 metre dive, I'm thinking, oh, gee, that hurts. Every time I go in the water, that hurts. Why would anybody do that? Now, don't get distracted. The point I'm saying is when we turn to Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, to, to get a bit of an idea of the church, we're going in the deep end. We, we are looking at something that is perhaps, um, well, it's, it's the deep end. And in order to just assure you, I'm not going to try and unpack that deep end. But as you go through the booklet, you'll discover that this passage appears on one of the days as a daily devotional. And I must apologise that I've misinformed you. There'll be some days where this daily focus might take five minutes. When you get to Hebrews 6, it might take a little longer. But I want to help you. I've just read through the passage, haven't turned to a commentary, haven't asked anybody else's opinion, but I've just sort of say, well, Lord, what's this... What are these verses saying to me? Now, if it helps you, I've actually made a copy of the next few slides that, that capture how the sort of the punchline for me in each of these verses. You can use it. I'm not saying it's the final answer. I'm just saying as, as I engage the word, this is... Is how it struck me. And I'm prepared to be corrected. I'm prepared to have somebody with good theological training to explain... No, I'm not actually. I'm, I, I just want to hear what the Word's saying to you. What's the Spirit of God saying to me in this context? So if you'd like a copy of that, you're most welcome. It'll be a bit crowded around the table, but just grab one and take it and go. Because it's just got the verse and my personal read on it. Now I'm not claiming any authority apart from saying this is how I anticipate the groups will go. We'll be engaging the word and the spirit of God could quicken something to us on a personal basis that we get to share and we might have some questions and we might have 
somebody, we might need to seek somebody for, ex oh, I've just latched on to Leon. So if anybody's got any questions about Hebrews 6, uh, check with Leon. No, no, he's stunned. I might have to do some more uh, scanning. To, anyway, but you give the drift. It, it, it is this engaging the word. Let's do it. All right. So uh, without, unless you, if you've got a copy of the Bible with you, and there, some of them are accessible in the seats, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put up verse, not, not the actual verse, just number one, verse one. This is what struck me. And next to it might be a, a picture or a sketch or something, but don't get distracted by that. All right? But this is, this is how it struck me as I uh, engage this word, appreciating this is the deep end of the pool. And when we do actually engage the word, it, it might take us a little bit deeper and it'll start to rattle our cage. And I'd be very, very confident you read Hebrews 6 in pretty well any translation, it'll rattle your cage and you will have questions. You'll have questions that I'm quite happy to field them. I won't guarantee I'll be able to answer them. But we can put them on a piece of paper and I'm saying, glad, I'm glad you raised that question because it gets us engaged with what the Word's saying to us. All right, number one, uh, ver verse one. Uh, in regards to just the, the simplest little statement. Keep moving forward in a deeper understanding and comprehension of your relationship, of the relationship you have with Jesus. Number one. Now, I'd be very, very confident that that's exactly what that passage is saying. It's just got a few sharp edges to it as, it go, as it's presented. Can you understand what I'm saying? Because I don't want that to be coming out of some comfortable, you know, just keep doing what you're doing, your relationship with Jesus. You, uh, who was it said something about being comfortable? Was that, was that, did I, can I quote Gerald on that? I didn't hear exactly what he said, so I might have to go back to him and say, oh, no, hang on, I've got it right. Um, number two, be prepared for lifestyle changes. You can pick up a copy of this afterwards as, 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 um, as you feel at ease. The Lord lays out a path for us to do this that will also bring clarity on the bigger picture. In other words, as my life is changing, I'm going to get a better picture of the bigger, bigger picture. I'm going to get a better understanding of the bigger picture. Okay? So, we're moving fast. Verses 4, 5, and 6. G'day, Rosie. Great to have you with us. Look at that. That's Rosie Inglis. Yes. Yes, and company, sorry. <laughs> yes. oh, who says I'm not easily distracted? Yeah, well, that's a good reason to be distracted. Uh, okay, four, five, and six. And here's, here's my bit that I'm not at all comfortable sitting with this particular passage. There is a, a risk in not maintaining momentum in your faith. There's a risk. And when you look at those three verses, you can see what the risk is. Okay with that? Yeah, I'm glad you're stunned because I was stunned. Okay, verse 7, which I just packaged 4, 5 and 6 together. Am I, am I up to date? Yes, I am. Sorry. Thanks, Clive. <laughs> if I get lost, you can, you can straighten me out. That's good. Uh, okay, verse 7. Continue to allow your life to be made new and that will bring blessing to more and more people. The more you're changed, the more a blessing you're going to be to somebody else around you. Particularly, and here's where I say it, on those two vital ingredients. You remember the two things that I, I believe, and they're coming out through, they're not coming out through my head, they're coming out through the media. Two things that people are looking for, obviously there's other things there, spirituality and community. And what have you and I got to offer? The top of the range. The absolute top of the range. We don't deal out rubbish. We deal out the reality of a personal relationship with God, a personal relationship with a person who's actually fashioned you and me. And then this beautiful way that he says, hey, Peter, you're a project and a half. I'm going to put you in with a whole bunch of other people that are also projects. And together, you're going to be the most amazing project that anybody's ever seen. What was the song we listened to this morning? Did you notice how the vocalists weren't quite in sync? 
with the video. The, we, we became very analytical sometimes, don't we? But did you remember the song? What was it? Yeah, we were one. And they'll know that we're Jesus followers because we're undergoing a project. We are a project, and we are a project. And people can see that. That's awesome, I reckon. I reckon that's awesome. I'm no finished product. You can see the warts. And guess what I can see? Well, not necessarily. Okay. So where did I go? I was going to say I was going to be more concise than that, didn't I? Cooperating with the clean-up process will be a vital part of this being made new. All right? Allow, we, again, I just keep picking up on what we've been singing. I've been saved. I've been sanctified. I've been redeemed. Yes? Or am I just singing words? But I am, actually. There is this clean-up process that just goes on and on and on until ultimately I step up and I realise, gee, I'm glad I stayed in that process because I'm ready for the next bit where everything's clean. That's awesome. Carry a genuine sense of anticipation about what the Lord will do next. Verse 9. Now here's the little bit that, that sort of is really, really encouraging. Verse 10. He says, Clearly, the Lord is at work in your midst. Isn't that good? That's good. And that's, that's something I deliberately do. I look, some people would like to say, what this church needs to do, I'm saying, Lord, what are you doing? Because I want to keep going with that. Otherwise, I'll start listening to the world around me and I'll start listening to people that have got expectations of somebody else. But the Lord's already at work in our midst. Each and every one of you here this morning, the Spirit of God has already done something in you. I may not know what it is and I don't necessarily need to know. But if I'm in a conversation with you, I'll be listening out. Listening out to what the Spirit of God did in you this morning. He is at work in our midst. And that's something we can very, very consciously look at. Receive the encouragement people give you. I was encouraged the other day. There was... Um... No, sorry, can't use that illustration. Just realised I didn't ask his permission. That's all right, good. But it's always good. A word of encouragement that comes out of left field. There's something about your journey that somebody else sees and you say, I really appreciate that. That was just so timely, that word of encouragement. And that's a significant part of groups' ministries is that we have the opportunity to be in a context face-to-face -face where I can encourage you, where other people can encourage you. You can encourage other people. Because we're deliberately there looking for the opportunity to do just that. I want to encourage you in the Lord. And that final verse. Be stirred on by the testimony of others. And be patient. Time will be a component part of the transformation process. Be patient. But it's the testimony of others that we can look out for. And I do have to say, it doesn't take me much to get stirred on. Because I see the Lord working. I see the Spirit of God working in people like yourself that I meet. And it spurs me on. And I think that's also part of distinct feature of the community of Christ, the, the church, the community of faith, that I don't have to be intentional about anything. Sometimes just standing next to you, you standing next to somebody, 
can actually stir them on. I did read an article this week out of a document called Voice of the Martyrs. Three, four, five pages long. It was inspiring. Tragic. Inspiring. And it caused me to make a check on just the momentum of my own journey with Jesus. Hopefully that's proved helpful as you come to Hebrews chapter 6 and as we share this venture over the next few weeks of, as it, as it were, building community. I trust that each and every one of you who engage on a personal basis or on a Sunday or in the small group, those visually tuning in or CD, whatever it is that you're connecting by, I trust that you are blessed with a collection of insights and revelations and stirrings and understandings and encouragement that allows you to know that you're a vital part of God's building project. And I trust that each and every one of us uh, find ourselves in our conversations we're able to encourage one another and to keep moving forward because soon it will be so, so obvious to the world around us that we are Jesus followers. Not just because we understand his love and comprehend his love, but we're transformed by it. And as Paul says, I'm actually compelled by it. And believe me, saints, that is the work of the Holy Spirit. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. The readiness to be transformed by the love of Jesus and then live by the power of that love. Amen? Good. Thanks for being with me this morning. Reminding you of, if you'd like that copy to help you uh, along the way, the copy's at the desk there. If you want to connect with one of those groups, please feel free to catch up to Des and Elaine. Let's pray together. Precious Lord Jesus, we acknowledge you again. We humble ourselves before you, Lord. We receive the testimony of your word. We embrace the stirring of your spirit as he continues the work that you've begun in each one of us. Have your way, Lord Jesus. That this world in which we live, this community in which we live, will know that we are Jesus' followers because of your love at work in us and through us by the power of your Spirit to the glory of the Father. Amen.